Have you ever wanted to fully understand the Bible from start to finish? The Bible is made up of 66 books written by over 40 authors inspired by the Holy Spirit. In this video, you will learn the complete story of Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We'll explore from Adam in the Garden of Eden to the death of Jesus' disciples. Without a doubt, when you finish watching this video, your love and appreciation for God's Word will be taken to whole new levels. After watching, you'll be able to comprehend the Bible like never before. I'm confident you'll be edified and enlightened by all that is taught. The scriptures will come alive for you. All right, let's get started. In the beginning, before time itself existed, there was only God. He has always been. He has no origin, no beginning. God is the source of all things. He was not created. He is the eternal creator of the universe and everything in it. God is the father of eternity. Eternity is his alone. Then, in a stunning display of divine power, God created the heavens and the earth. On the sixth day, God formed man and woman, Adam and Eve, crafting them in his own image. He placed them in the perfection of the Garden of Eden to commune with him and steward his wondrous creation. Tragically, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command, falling prey to temptation. Their rebellion unleashed sin into the world, severing humanity's relationship with their holy creator. We all became subject to depravity, inheriting the curse of our first parents' disobedience. Adam and Eve's first two sons, Cain and Abel, reflected this corruption now in the world. The brothers both brought offerings to God, Cain from his harvest and Abel from his flock. But God favored Abel's offering, angering Cain. In a jealous rage, Cain murdered his brother Abel, becoming the first murderer. When confronted by God, Cain lied about what he had done. As punishment for spilling his brother's blood, God cursed Cain to wander the earth marked and alone. Generations passed, and wickedness infected the human race like a plague. People turned away from God, pursuing their own sinful desires. The earth was saturated with violence and corruption. God's heart broke seeing his creation in utter rebellion. The situation grew so dire that God determined to wipe the slate clean through a great flood while protecting the only righteous man he could find, Noah. God instructed Noah to build an ark to preserve himself, his family, and the animals. After this catastrophic deluge, Noah's family repopulated the earth. Later, God called a man named Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans. Abraham left behind his country and family to follow God's call. He became a pilgrim of faith, raising altars to God wherever he went. God promised Abraham that he would become the father of a great nation through whom all the families of the earth would one day be blessed. God had promised Abraham that he would become the father of a great nation, even though Abraham and his wife Sarah were already advanced in age and had no children. Against all odds, Sarah miraculously conceived and bore Abraham a son in their old age. They named him Isaac, the long-awaited child of promise. Years later, Isaac married Rebekah, who was also unable to have children. Isaac prayed for her, and God answered by blessing Rebekah with twins. The firstborn was named Esau. He grew into a skilled hunter and outdoorsman. The second twin was named Jacob. Jacob was quiet and mild-mannered compared to his brother. One day, Esau returned starving from an unsuccessful hunt. He agreed to sell his birthright to his brother Jacob in exchange for a bowl of stew. Jacob tricked his older brother, gaining both Esau's birthright and their father's blessing through deception. This created great bitterness between the brothers. Jacob received a new name, Israel, after he struggled with an angel all through the night. Jacob experienced many struggles throughout his life, so after his conversion, Jacob was given the name Israel and became the father of the Israelites. Jacob's family consisted of 12 sons and one daughter. Joseph was one of Jacob's 12 sons. Out of jealousy, his brothers sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt. 
But Joseph gained favor in Egypt after correctly interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, warning of an upcoming famine. Pharaoh appointed him to oversee food storage for the famine. When the famine struck, Joseph's brothers came to Egypt to buy food. After testing them, Joseph revealed his identity and forgave his brothers. Jacob and all his descendants then migrated to Egypt to escape the famine and reunite with Joseph. The new pharaoh later feared the Israelites were becoming too numerous, so he oppressed them into slavery for over 400 years. The Israelites grew weary and cried out to God for deliverance. After 400 years of living in Egypt, the Israelites left under the leadership of Moses. This group totaled about 2 million people, including 600,000 men plus women and children. God promised to lead them to a land of their own, the Promised Land. What should have been a short journey stretched to 40 years due to the people's lack of faith. When Moses sent spies to scout the Promised Land, 10 returned with a negative report, saying the people there were giants and the Israelites were like grasshoppers in comparison. Only Joshua and Caleb trusted God to deliver the land to them. As punishment for their unbelief, that generation was condemned to die in the wilderness over the 40 years of wandering. After 40 years, Joshua took over leading the people. In six years, he waged war and began distributing portions of the promised land to the 12 tribes, but much land remained unconquered. After Joshua, Israel was led by judges for 330 years. This was a turbulent time spiritually as the people struggled to remain faithful to God. Eventually, the Israelites demanded a king to unite them, rejecting God as their king. The prophet Samuel anointed Saul as the first king of Israel. Saul started off humble, but later grew proud and corrupt. When Saul turned away from God completely, David was anointed king. David was considered a man after God's own heart, though he sinned greatly at times. He reigned 40 years, making Jerusalem his capital. His son Solomon succeeded him, reigning another 40 years during which he built the temple. However, Solomon's many foreign wives turned his heart from God. After Solomon died, tensions arose over taxation policies. This caused the northern ten tribes to break away and form Israel under King Jeroboam. The southern kingdom of Judah retained Jerusalem and the dynasty of David. The once unified nation of Israel fractured into two kingdoms following Solomon's death. Israel in the north and Judah in the south. This divided state left God's people vulnerable to foreign conquest. The northern kingdom of Israel was ruled by 19 kings across nine dynasties who led the people into false worship. Prophets like Elijah confronted pagan practices, yet the people obstinately turned from God. After 200 years of waywardness, God allowed the Assyrians to brutally vanquish Israel, exiling them from the land. The kingdom of Judah fared better under righteous reforms by Hezekiah and Josiah. But most kings and people embraced idolatry, provoking rebukes from prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. Yet they refused to repent. In 586 BC, Judah fell to Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed Solomon's temple and enslaved the people for 70 humbling years. After being in Babylon for 70 years as prisoners, the Jewish people were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. Leaders like Zerubbabel, Ezra and Nehemiah helped them rebuild the temple and city walls. But enemies like the Samaritans tried to stop them. They wrote fake letters about the Jews to the Persian king who ruled over Israel then. So rebuilding God's temple was halted for many years. In this time, the people lost their excitement for finishing God's house. They focused on building nice homes for themselves instead. The prophets Haggai and Zechariah warned them to restart work on the temple. The people listened, asked God for forgiveness and eagerly went back to work. Soon the beautiful temple was completed. A great revival happened with families and priests committing to follow God again. But about 100 years passed and the people's hearts grew cold. They offered sick and worthless animals for burnt offerings at the temple. 
The priests became dishonest and stopped teaching God's word. Many marriages ended in divorce. People assumed God did not see their sins or care, so God sent his prophet Malachi to call the people back to him. But they still offered poor sacrifices and did not bring their full tithes. After Malachi, around 400 years passed with no new prophets speaking for God, some non-Bible history books were written then. The Old Testament was also translated into Greek during this time. The Greek Empire conquered the world under Alexander the Great. Though he died young, Greek language and culture spread widely. This helped the gospel spread far later on. After Alexander, Israel was ruled by Egyptian Ptolemies and Syrian Seleucids. When the Seleucid king Antiochus tried to force Greek religion on the Jews, a war broke out led by Judas Maccabeus. His side won after much bloodshed. Later, the Roman general Pompey invaded Jerusalem and the Romans took control. Herod the Great ruled over Israel for them. He expanded the temple but killed even his own sons out of jealousy. After Herod died, his sons divided the kingdom. One son, Archelaus, was so cruel that Israel asked Rome to remove him. Roman governors like Pilate then ruled directly over Judea. The Jews longed for the Messiah to free them from the Romans and evil kings. It was then Jesus was born, just as God promised. King Herod tried to kill him, so Jesus' family fled to Egypt. They later returned home to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. At 30, Jesus began teaching, doing miracles and training disciples after being baptized. Jesus preached God's kingdom everywhere, in synagogues, homes, fields, cities and villages. His miracles showed he was God's son, promised long ago. Though Jesus was Jewish, his gospel was for all people. He allowed himself to be crucified as a sacrifice to pay for sins. Three days later, he rose from the dead, defeating sin and death forever. After rising, Jesus returned to heaven. The Holy Spirit empowered his followers at Pentecost. In the book of Acts, we read how the apostles spread the gospel despite persecution. Paul's letters guided the early Christians. His journey spread the faith across the Roman Empire. After rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to his disciples over a 40-day period, speaking to them about God's kingdom. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promised Holy Spirit to empower them as witnesses. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out on Jesus' followers, enabling them to preach the gospel boldly. Thousands believed and were added to the church in Jerusalem. The apostles performed miracles, taught and fellowshiped regularly, enjoying the favor of the people. This rapid growth and popularity sparked opposition from Jewish authorities. Stephen, one of seven chosen to distribute food, was seized and put on trial for blasphemy after powerfully proclaiming the gospel. He became the first Christian martyr after being stoned to death. To escape mounting persecution, believers scattered from Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria. One who fled to Samaria was Philip, who preached Christ to crowds, healed the paralyzed and demon-possessed, and baptized many new converts, including a sorcerer named Simon. When Peter and John prayed for these Samaritan believers, they received the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, a devout Pharisee named Saul viciously persecuted Christians in Jerusalem until Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, bringing Saul to repentant faith. Now called Paul, he immediately began proclaiming Jesus, confounding the Jews in Damascus. After 14 years of ministry, Paul and Barnabas were sent from Syrian Antioch on missionary journeys to spread the gospel across Asia Minor and Greece, enduring persecution but planting many churches. Paul wrote letters like Romans and Corinthians to these churches, providing solid theology and practical guidance. While visiting Jerusalem, Paul was seized in the temple and narrowly escaped lynching. Though arrested by Romans to protect him, he remained in custody for two years each in Caesarea and Rome, using his imprisonment to write encouraging letters to churches and individuals like Timothy, Titus and Philemon. 
Persecution against Christians intensified under Emperor Nero, who brutally tortured and executed believers, even using them as human torches. On July 18, 64 AD, a fire began in Rome, lasting six days and destroying more than 70% of the city. Emperor Nero, who was initially blamed for the fire, was not in Rome at the time. He returned to the city and led the rescue attempt. However, he utilized the calamity to persecute Christians, wrongly accusing them for the fire. Many believers were tied to poles covered in pitch and burned alive to light up the Knights of Rome. It was a real massacre. The New Testament was written over the course of 50 years. We have four pictorial books, the Gospels, and three of them are synoptic, which means they portray the same viewpoint. Matthew's Gospel is written largely for a Jewish audience and presents Jesus as the King of the Jews. Mark's Gospel is written for the Romans and emphasizes Jesus' role as a servant. Luke's Gospel focuses on Jesus as the Son of Man and is intended for Greeks. John's Gospel, written at the end of the first century, refutes Gnosticism and demonstrates Jesus' true divinity and humanity. In addition to the Gospels, we have the Acts of the Apostles, which contains facts of the early church from its birth, led to its spread into the city of Rome. The Book of Acts does not conclude since the church's history continues. We also include letters from the Apostle Paul to the churches at Rome, Galatia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae and Thessalonica, as well as personal letters to Timothy, Titus and Philemon. Furthermore, we have a letter addressed to Jews who are being tempted by persecution, known as the Letter to the Hebrews. We also have the generic letters from James, Peter, John and Jude. Finally, the Apocalypse is an eschatological book that recounts Christ's triumphant victory over his church. It was composed by the Apostle John on Patmos about the year 96. We've now walked through the grand narrative of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and my prayer is that this sweeping overview has deepened your faith and appreciation for God's living word. The Bible is an astounding testament to God's steadfast covenant love and redemptive plan for humanity across the ages, and may its eternal truths continue to dwell in you richly, transforming your life and worldview each day. Keep seeking God through scripture, and never stop delving into its pages. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the power and mystery of the Bible. I hope you have been blessed by this video, but there is one thing needful for all my viewers. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your savior, there's still time to repent and alter your story. As it says in Acts 3.19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. He can remove sadness, loneliness, and provide for your needs, Philippians 4.19. Close your room door and pray to God, and he will listen. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out my channel for more Bible stories and other content.